There is a new movie coming out from Netflix that is getting accused of spreading pro-AI propaganda, which is, uh, in Dane speak, propaganda. <laughs> and that is a heresy Beautiful. in Hollywood, because if you're pro-AI, you are pro-big studio. It benefits big studios to use AI and cut out below-the-line workers or even stars. And in this trailer, it is, Jennifer Lopez literally says the line, I won't trust any AI. I, I can't actually explain to you guys the, like you think my jumping into this <laughs> chair is violent. The violent <laughs> cringe reaction that I had to this line was not unlike somebody having an epileptic seizure. Well, let's take let's a look at the trailer, trailer and see if it's as bad as you think it is. Here we go, guys. Let us know what you think. <laughs> Hold on, first of all, there we go. Buttons are going slow. Good morning, Atlas. Time to wake up. I'm awake. Why is she sleeping? I'm, I'm sorry. Why is she sleeping with glasses on? It's the future. What was that sound? Everyone she sleeps okay. with I'm sorry. We'll start over. I, I'm future. sorry. I had a moment there. You, just, you don't fall asleep with your glasses on. <laughs> Good morning, Atlas. Time to wake up. I'm awake. Agent Atlas Shepard has spent years of her life hunting the artificial intelligence known as Harlan. Originally engineered to advance humanity, instead nearly ended it. If you really want to try to capture Harlan, you need me on that mission. Mayday! We are under attack! What do I do? Strap it! Oh my god. Okay, this is out of control. This planet is unstable and inhospitable. Atlas, my name is Smith. Is that really necessary? You're a computer program. I'm driving through LA and out of Roscoe. No, I'm not. No? <laughs> what are you then? I am a computer program named Smith. No one likes a smart ass <laughs> Smith. We don't have much time. Harlan's planning an attack. Atlas, my primary protocol is to keep you alive. Same! I don't need your help. I don't trust any AI. <laughs> I don't need no man. <laughs> Smith! Okay, this is out of control. Atlas, this won't work if you don't trust me. Okay. This is what it feels like to be you. This is what it feels like to be us. It's beautiful. Don't worry. We are simply the better versions of you. If we don't stop harm, all life on Earth is doomed. Do everything I know about it. Shit. You're in my head and the only thing you learn how to do is curse? I'm an adaptive learner. Okay, I wanna, aggressively stupid. I want to point out something that there are exactly two types of trailers that you can make. It's the SoundCloud Spotify rapper trailer with like a Kid Cudi or Kanye S <laughs> song or the haunting 80s remix song. And those are the only two types of trailers you're allowed to cut in Hollywood. Also, whoever's voicing Smith, it's literally like they just got a guy who dropped out of like voiceover school. Like, the, like who dropped out of voice trailer actor school and just dropped his audio in there. Well, is the AI supposed to sound really cool in Chad? Yes, it should sound cool. Or metrosexual. It should sound cool. I don't, I don't care, know. Like, uh, I've never heard of Chad I don't want AI. to be, I don't want the good guys to be represented by dorks. Okay. I want the good guys to be represented. <laughs> we got Tony a $20 Todd super chat from Dylan Selking. He said, I'm joining in about an hour late because of a three o'clock meeting. Hope this has been a great show so far. Well, thank you. We certainly hope it yeah. is. Um, the, <laughs> the only thing that was mildly cool were like the mech suits had like a, a cool concept there that doesn't look like it's going to be executed well in the film. It seemed like maybe Simu Liu is kind of designed to be a bad guy and maybe mm -hmm. they should have focused more on him. 
Well, people what naturally is, don't like Simu Liu, yeah. so that like, that works. But <laughs> we don't know what the movie is about or the plot of well, it so, based so, on that trailer. So the, the issue from... the issue here is that it's a the concept is a good AI versus a bad AI. The Smith AI is very clearly supposed to be the good the guy, Netflix. and the Harlan AI that's per, portrayed by Simu Liu is the evil one, which is why he says we're mm. simply the better versions of yourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, not to talk about the show again, but Person of Interest did this back in 2016 where they had the machine versus Samaritan, which was the concept of a machine born with no human ethics uh, that, were, that was taught no human ethics and simply was coding that turned into artificial intelligence and one that was taught human ethics from a good person, uh, which, which grew to be an actual friend to humanity. Mm -hmm. And it did it far better than this looks like it's going to. <laughs> Granted, it's vastly different forms of storytelling. But back to your point, you can't make a movie like this because the people in Hollywood, the people who, the people who read discussing films at the comments sections aren't going to support this. Right, yeah. At least the reviews are not going to be charitable to that nuanced point. But... I think it's just because Jennifer Lopez doesn't make sense in a sci-fi action movie. Put her back in the rom-coms. Yeah. I can't. I can't take it seriously. Also, she really never pushing. wore glasses again after falling asleep in glasses. She then lives the less the rest of her life without glasses on, which is kind of shocking. To me. <laughs> she only sleeps in glasses. She only sleeps. No, in, in the glasses. future you sleep with glasses. You wouldn't get it. You're not really? in the future. Mm. Um, it's like a gender swapped her. That's what it made me think of. Is it? Yeah, you know, she's like an independent girl boss who don't need no AI, and then she learns to trust the AI. It's really yeah. a romance. They story. The minute got, she's in trouble, she's like, "Come back, where are you?" They should have yeah, gotten somebody you. even more off the mark. They should have gotten Joey King to play this role. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. I'm saying like, get somebody who makes even less sense than J Lo than for J -Lo. this role. But the problem is, we all know who would actually fit for this role: a dude. But they're not gonna make this movie with a dude. Yeah, like have a bromance between a human dude and an AI dude. Yeah. Well, that's what oh, I mean. no, it's no. Like you the... get a female AI. You have the a good one. AI. You get the good guy portrayed by the, with the female eye, similar to what they do in Marvel with Karen Gillan doing the voice. Um, Does he fall in love with it? No. Uh, okay. But the point <laughs> is, is you get, yeah, somebody says Matt Damon. Get Matt Damon to do this role, like The Martian. Well, uh, it's a Netflix they, movie. They can't so afford him. No, <laughs> it's not going to happen. He's, he's too busy making um, the weird art house movies with Ben Affleck <laughs> right now. But um, we recently talked about the fact that Netflix has an algorithm which they use to test potential projects for success. Mm. Instead of screen testing with a human audience, they're using an algorithm to decide whether they green light a script. Yeah. Um, and just coincidentally, Emily Blunt commented in a new interview saying she says algorithms frustrate me i hate that effing word how can it be associated with art and content how can we let it determine what will be successful and what will not i was in a three-hour film about a physicist which had the impact it had the algorithms probably wouldn't have grasped it my hope is that oppenheimer and similar projects are not considered anomalies that Bruh. we stop translating creative experience into diagrams depends on whether your algorithm can weigh the benefits of having a director like christopher nolan and saying a physicist is an inherently flawed argument because he's not a physicist he's Oppenheimer which is not the same thing it's not <laughs> random physicist number two it's a famous person in history made by one of the most prolific directors working today um, Carnell said JLo in scene you need me for this mission JLo in the next scene what do I do <laughs> Well, not, I think that's supposed to be a punchline, right? What that means is she's good at selling herself. Is she's it? just like uh, not good at actually finishing the job. <laughs> uh, what it is, though, is like, look, there has been an eternal struggle as long as cinema has existed between the guys financing and the creatives, right? Obviously, it's much more advanced now in the age of corporate umbrellas and the purchase of IP and all of this stuff. And the bean counters are always going to look for analytical tools to figure out. Now, we were I was just reading that article today from Heather Graham where she talked about she <laughs> learned more about this stuff once she started producing movies that there is inherent value and worth ascribed to genders in Hollywood, whether that's whether she believes that that's right or not, 
that that is just a fact. It's the way it is in Hollywood. And the people who are doling out the money for this stuff are always going to be looking for numbers to help justify why you give this amount of money to make this, why you give this amount of money to make that. You're going to give Christopher Nolan a hundred million dollars to make Oppenheimer. You're not necessarily going to do that for Olivia Wilde. If she wants to make one about Roberta J. Oppenheimer or something <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, she's on her, what, fourth, second chance now as yes. a director <laughs> because because Christopher <laughs> Nolan has a proven track record but they're always going to be looking for statistics and run algorithms that's just the way these industries are going to advance because they need to be able to put on paper a reason why this is given this amount why this is given this amount all it seems to me is just a way for them to justify what they spent well I don't know if the human executives would make any better decisions than an algorithm could there, and that's the presupposition that yeah. Emily Blunt is operating on, mm -hmm. that Hollywood well, executives, the human ones, are making good decisions that should be made. And for the vast majority of the time, that's, that's not, not true. true. Back in the, okay, so back in the day, I always saw it as this. It's like the, the money guys, which I always assumed were more conservative in nature and perhaps more connected with the idea that this can't just be for this small group, this has to be for everyone were there with the, with the, you know, their hands on the purse strings to say, that's not a good idea. And then, you know, they can rein in the creatives who may not have that inclination and get caught up in the work. But now yeah. they all are of the same belief system, so it doesn't matter. Not necessarily the belief system. I think that the money guys just decided it, as long as it has an IP name attached to it, it's a green light. Well, that's, that's why that's what they've decided to do. And that's why I laugh when people say there's no new content. I'm like, there's new stuff all the time. It's just all on streaming and gets no attention because they don't run marketing oh, campaigns. like Atlas? Like, I, no, like this movie I'm, on streaming, which more sucks. Of, <laughs> I'm speaking more of shows. I'm making okay. an assumption and, about the movie. And even then, but... it's it's still a new property. I mean, I'm assuming it's a new it property. It is, yeah. I mean, it's a ripoff of a bunch of different types of movies, yes. but it's still something technically new. But would Atlas go to theaters? I don't think so. No. Even with J-Lo in it? No, especially. Put her in a rom-com really? if it's going to theaters, but she doesn't make sense in this genre or in this context at all. I don't get it. Um, I, I find the whole concept really, really interesting because we talked about Late Night with the Devil, um, where they got very mad about AI. Uh, literally three tiny images that appeared on screen for less than a second. It's the artists who have an objection to that. The audiences do not care. Correct. And uh, you could or say- Or you have a morbid curiosity to see AI content. We talk a fair amount about the idea of predictive programming. Perhaps what Amazon or what uh, Netflix is doing is they want to program you to think positively of AI. Maybe that's what this is about. Do you think that's, that's no, really I, the intention behind this? Do I really believe that these <laughs> companies are doing that? In this case, no. I, I don't think that that's what this is. I think that they said cool mech suits, explosions. People like Jennifer Lopez, right? And, <laughs> she's still and I'm, I'm, and I, and, Or she had a contract with them because she did The Mother. And she's like, right. I get to do this many movies with you. Produ maybe, maybe Ben Affleck is producing it or something like that. Maybe. I doubt it. But, um, <laughs> I don't think he would sign It's crazy because Ben Affleck has done some great movies. Mm -hmm. And J-Lo just... Kind of always swing and a miss. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's any J-Lo movies off the top of my head that I that I really, really like. Not the, the greatest love story never told? You, no. You didn't like that? I don't even know which ones <laughs> I've ever even seen. Like I said, just the other day. Wedding day, Planner? I've, made in Manhattan? I don't, I don't, see, those, that's her That's her that's niche. Her thing. Yeah, that's her niche exactly. right there. Why that's are they she... inserting her into a movie like this? I don't get it. Um, Selena? Again, Selena also great. It, that was a great movie, like and she acted very well right? in it. Uh, otherwise, she's just cheesy outside of that genre. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media, and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.